an online retail company tracked the total number of purchases monthly. In May 2007, there were 3,920 purchases, and in December 2007, there were 3,780. The purchases followed a linear model of the form P equals S of T, which equals RT plus I, where P is the number of purchases in thousands. So P, or S of T, is the number of purchases in thousands, and T is months, where January 2007 is T equals zero. So T, the input variable, is the number of months after January 2007. Often when given a linear function, it's in the form of f of x equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, which equals the constant rate of change, and b is a vertical intercept, which is the initial or starting amount. But notice for our linear function, the slope m is actually r, and the vertical intercept or starting amount b is actually i. Now let's work on determining the answers to these four questions. The first question asks us to find the constant rate of change which would be the slope of a linear function, which in our linear equation would be r. To determine the slope, though, we need to write two ordered pairs from the given information, and then use those ordered pairs to determine the change in the number of purchases divided by the change in the number of months. Where in general, each ordered pair would be t comma p, if we want t comma s of t. So we need to write an ordered pair for the number of purchases in May 2007, as well as the number of purchases in December 2007. Remember, t is the number of months after January 2007. So looking at this table below, the second row gives the value of t for each month in 2007. So notice how for May 2007, t is equal to 4. And for December 2007, t is equal to 11. So the ordered pair for May 2007 would be 4, comma. Now remember, the value of P or S of T is the number of purchases in thousands. So P or S of T is not going to be 3,920. It's actually 3.92. 3,920 divided by 1,000 would give us the value of P or S of T, again, as 3.92. And then for December 2007, where there were 3,780 purchases, the ordered pair would be 11 comma 3.78. So now R, the constant rate of change, is equal to the change in purchases divided by the change in the number of months, which in this case would be 3.78 minus 3.92 divided by 11 minus 4. So this gives us negative 0.14 divided by 7, which equals negative 0.02. And the units would be thousands of purchases per month. For part A, because the slope is negative, we know the sales are decreasing at a constant rate of, again, this would be 0.02 thousand purchases per month. To convert this just to number of purchases, we have to multiply this value by 1,000. And notice that 0 0.02 times 1,000 is equal to 20. We do not enter negative 20, though. The negative sign indicates that it's decreasing. So it's decreasing at a constant rate of 20, and the units would be purchases per month. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B asks us to write out the linear function p equals s of t. And we just found the value of r. So now we know that p, or s of t, is equal to negative 0.02t plus i. To write this equation, we now need to find the value of i, which we can do using either of the two ordered pairs here that we found to begin part a. It doesn't matter which ordered pair we use. Let's go ahead and use this first ordered pair. So we'll substitute 4 for t and 3.92 for p or s of t. Performing the substitution, we would have 3.92 equals negative 0 0.02 times 4 plus i. So that gives us 3.92 equals negative 0.08 plus i. Solving for i, 
we would add 0 0.08 to both sides, giving us i equals 4. Now that we know the value of i, we know our linear model is p equals s of t equals negative 0.02t plus 4. And now for part c, we're asked to use the linear function that we just found and predict the number of purchases in September 2010. So we need to find the value of t for September 2010. Well, looking back at the values of t for 2007, notice that September 2007 would be t equals 8. And because September 2007 is three years after September 2007, the value of t would be equal to 8 plus the number of months in three years, which would be 36. So t equals 44 would represent September 2010. So now we need to evaluate the linear function at t equals 44. So we'd have p equals s of 44, which equals negative 0 0.02 times 44 plus 4. So going to the calculator, negative 0 0.02 times 44 plus 4 is equal to 3.12. Remember, this would be thousands of purchases. So if we wanted to know the number of purchases, we'd have to multiply 3.12 times 1,000. So multiplying by 1,000, removing the decimal point to the right three places, gives us 3,120. And finally, for part D, we're asked, what month and year does the model predict sales will be 3,000? So again, remember, P or S of T is in thousands. So we need to recognize here they're telling us that P or S of T is equal to 3. So we'll substitute 3 for P or S of T and then solve for T. So making the substitution, we'd have the equation 3 equals negative 0.02T plus 4. Subtracting 4 on both sides, we'd have negative 1 equals negative 0.02t. Dividing both sides by negative 0.02, we get t equals negative 1 divided by negative 0.2 is equal to 50. To help us determine what year and month t equals 50 would be, because there are 12 months in a year, Let's take 50 and divide by 12. So 50 divided by 12 would be 4. 4 times 12 equals 48. Subtracting, we have a remainder of 2. So we know that 50 is equal to 4 times 12 plus 2. Now if we determine what month and year t equals 2 is, we can just add 4 years to that time. So going back to our table, notice t equals 2 is March 2007. So if we take March 2007 and add four years, we'd be at March 2011. So t equals 50 is March 2011. Again, t equals 2 is March 2007. And because there are 12 months in a year, if we add four years to March 2007, we get March 2011. So our answer is March 2011. I hope you found this helpful.